tonight. Western Pacific activity set to continue on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 9th. So right now we have a much weakened Bonnie in the Eastern Pacific which is going to be dying off fairly soon as it continues westwards and tropical or subtropical storm Irie which is headed northwards uh, or is about to along the coast of Japan and still clinging on to that subtropical status. On day 39 of Atlantic hurricane season there's no areas of interest in the Atlantic, super quiet and nothing expected way out to the 16th day of the model runs at least and that's where the long range goes to on the GFS so a long long time of quiet in the Atlantic fingers crossed. In the eastern Pacific Bonnie there moving out to sea and is starting to feel the effects of the uh, poor conditions out there uh, a high chance of development behind it 80% and a low area of interest there on the uh, Central American coastline there towards the end of the five day period. Western Pacific, so Tropical Storm Irie going to be forgotten fairly soon because we've got these two other systems that could develop a 30% in the South China Sea and a 40% in the Philippine Sea which could go on to affect Taiwan. So getting quite busy there as you would expect for the time of year. The Indian Ocean also as you'd expect very quiet right now, in fact dormant, completely asleep uh, which is pretty standard for this time of year. We don't have a close-up satellite of anywhere today, so let's take a look at the full Atlantic Basin right now, and this is how it looks. Uh, a lot of uh, storminess occurring across the United States once again. Out to sea, some uh, storms there off the uh, mid-Atlantic coast, and generally a dry picture in the tropical zone. Uh, dryness is the, the dominant word across the coast of Mexico there's some thunderstorms blowing up there as well Bonnie shriveling up and shrinking there still wrapping round though and uh, that area of interest behind it a massive wave to be honest and it's very easy to spot in fact it's probably about three or four times as big as Bonnie and in the western pacific you can just about see Irie towards the top there and those two areas of interest that are really starting to blow up particularly the one in the south china sea which looks like it's going to try and rotate fairly soon the one in the philippine sea got a little bit of a way to go yet but uh, ironically a higher chance in the long run Looking towards our other areas, this is the Indian Ocean right now, as you can see, uh, fairly quiet, thunderstorms blowing up over India though, I imagine that would be very welcome, rain showers, um, certainly been always of course is hot over there at this time of year and in the southern hemisphere it is very dead right now barely even any frontal systems to talk about just the tiny little thunderstorm that blew up there in the coral sea for a brief period but very quiet there, uh, it is dead. Well then, let's take a look now at the sea surface temperatures, right on cue. Eastern Pacific, struggling to get those temperatures up, uh, no surprise to those who've been watching for a while. But along the coast of Mexico it is higher, so storms that track along that area are going to have a better time. Uh, upwelling significant behind Bonnie by the way. The Atlantic, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, very hot, piping hot, indeed 30 degrees plus along the coast of Louisiana. Uh, the Gulf Stream looking very good, uh, that whole area off the southeastern United States very warm now. 26 degree isotherm extends out to sea by quite some distance across half of the whole ocean by this point. North Indian Ocean still warm in the Bay of Bengal, much cooler in the Arabian Sea. South China Sea very warm indeed, although slightly cooler uh, near Hong Kong and the southern coast of China. Of course still uh, recovering a little bit from Chaba. And further north uh, still cooling a little bit near Okinawa after Airi, um, but behind that in the Philippine Sea and in the southern South China Sea, uh, the tropical nursery you could call it, it's still very warm, 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. And looking across the world on the anomalies, uh, still the same picture that we've been looking at for quite a while. Uh, Eastern Pacific is generally below average. The Atlantic, even in the western part especially I should say, is well above average. 
and in the western pacific it's the subtropical zones that are much above average right now the tropical zones fairly normal uh, but watch out for subtropical developments like irie i suppose oceanic heat content very hot there very much so in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, the loop current, and in the Western Caribbean, much like yesterday's update. In the Western Pacific, also looking very good. Eastern Pacific, just that little bit popping up there, but well, that's uh, at a bit of a low latitude for a tropical cyclone. So it's still a bit of a struggle over there. Let's check some models then, and thankfully it looks like everything's up to date on my screen, so I can actually tell you what's going on with my own eyes. So you can see Bonnie dying off there and approaching Hawaii, still traceable for a while. That next system eventually forming and forms rather quickly towards the end, uh, well, the middle to end of that uh, forecast window, uh, towards day three to five, uh, and then it becomes a hurricane. Another hurricane there, lower latitude, it's got more area to go through, uh, but doesn't survive particularly long for Eastern Pacific hurricane standards. We'll watch the rest of that shortly. You can see Irene moving off there towards the coast of Japan and eventually making landfall on Hokkaido. And then towards the end of that five day period, that Philipp Philippine sea storm developing and becoming a typhoon there, possibly rapid intensification before Taiwan. That is still a pretty uncertain situation and that can change rather quickly. It could instead go through the Batanas Islands of the Philippines and then into the South China Sea and then could be a threat to the coast of China and miss Taiwan completely. It could still deviate towards the north and northeast away from Taiwan as well. And here is the rainfall expectations, watching that South China Sea system as well could deliver a lot of rain to some local areas of Vietnam. But looking at the other system, you can see they're plowing into Taiwan and delivering very high amounts of rain exceeding 10 inches, which would be 250 millimeters. First of all, looking at the totals in Japan for Myri, not very much at this point, around 2 inches, which is 50 millimeters. And in Taiwan, there's possibly some local amounts uh, pushing 300 millimeters and some little areas off the coast of China also getting up to around 4 inches uh, probably not associated with that potential storm. So lots of rainfall potential for potentially both of these upcoming tropical cyclones if they do get their act together. Looking at the longer range, we can take a look at what happens to the rest of that storm in the Eastern Pacific. That's the current 80% uh, we've marked. That one behind it there, that's the 10% starting to get going as well. Uh, moving through as a Category 1, maybe Category 2 hurricane and getting rather large towards the end of that 10-day period. But watch the first storm, it does make some progress and eventually it makes landfall in Hawaii, possibly still as a tropical storm at that point. It will certainly well, according to this model, still have the tropical storm force winds, so that's something we could be watching out for, a potential Hawaiian landfall. Still way out though to tell. And this is what the Western Pacific's showing, that typhoon making landfall, and looking like some energy is being put into another typhoon that forms over there, and, invent and that one moves off towards the northeast, passing the coast of Japan, and maybe another storm towards the end of that loop, headed towards Japan as well. This is what July and August tends to look like in the Western Pacific, so we can't rule this out, but it would be a very messy picture indeed. That's all the serious stuff done at this point. I can tell you about the Force 13 store. Scan the barcode and you can take a look at what we've got on offer. And you can also request animations on there as well. Full seasons, storm animations, anything you like. And in the silly range, I wanted to show you the Eastern Pacific, the rest of what was going on, but it's not working. Uh, but this is a system that the GFS is trying desperately to make into a tropical storm in the South Indian Ocean. It would be extremely large if that happened and traverses the whole of the basin pretty much. Probably not a tropical storm for most of that period, although it does try there, there, right at the very beginning. Um, extremely hard to become a strong tropical storm. GFS has been hinting at something like this somewhere in the forecast range for a very long time by now and I doubt that will happen. On this day though a certainly a very different picture was unfolding. The El Nino was well in effect on July 9th 2015 which allowed Nanka to become a very strong category 4 moving through the Mariana Islands at this time. Chan Hom was also a category 4 at this point so there were two at a time and Typhoon Linfo was just making landfall in southern China right now. In the eastern pacific we also had tropical storm Ela which was headed towards Hawaii and Ayune was about to form in the next day or so 
also in the Central Pacific, that one, I think. <clears throat> well then, in the Atlantic in 2022, the next name is Danielle. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Darby. And in the Central Pacific, they'll wish it was 2015 because we've got no chance of seeing Hone anytime soon. And we're going to roll over to our 1000th day tomorrow night. So make sure you're there on Force 13 Sundays. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Songda. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Sichuan. Of course, the Western Pacific, far away from its 2015 glory as well. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we've got Daria next up in the Australian region, Ashley in the Southwest Indian, and it's Hale in the South Pacific. That's all for tonight. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.